But verse 14 brings us on to the issue I want to deal with. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Now, I, I've not heard anybody else preach this, but through my life, having been a pastor and an evangelist, I actually sense, I'm not trying to call this doctrine, it might be my personal opinion, I sense that there are two totally different ministries of healing. Mm. You see, here we say, is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And when you do that, two things happen. One, the prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they will be forgiven him. You know, it's quite interesting because I don't really hear this preached. And yet this is a very strong message to the church that if sickness occurs, the church, the elders of the church should come together, anoint the sick with oil, pray over them. And if you pray in faith, the Lord will heal and because there's an implication here that the sickness may have come through some misdeed, then they will be forgiven. You see, the scripture that I stand on as an evangelist is very different. It's very clear. I mean, it's quite clear. Mark 16, verse 15, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he said, these signs will follow those that believe and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, in that case, it's quite clear a commission and a call to the evangelist. Preach the gospel, heal the sick. And right through the teaching and the leadership of Jesus, this is what he was teaching his disciples. Preach the gospel, heal the sick. Now, there is no inference in the Gospels to the same thing of the elders of the church. The church wasn't in existence. And anointing with oil. Because oil is, a, is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. So I see there are two different ministries. And um, we also need to add faith to it. When I'm evangelizing, I, I operate on the <laughs> Mark's gospel. I preach the gospel and I heal the sick. Uh, yes, I lay hands on them. And, and uh, yes, uh, although in actual fact, <laughs> while in my early years, I always laid hands on people and saw some incredible miracles. There came a time when I had two problems. One. If you've got 20,000 people or 30,000 people in a broken down football stadium, no proper seats, and you try to pray with 20 or 30,000 people, you're in trouble. You can't do it. I remember on one occasion it was quite humorous because the stadium was surrounded by um, housing estate and apartment blocks. And although we probably only had about five, ten probably 10,000 in the stadium, uh, I was praying for people individually and I couldn't understand why the line never got any shorter until I realized that the people getting healed were going up into their apartments and bringing their pals down saying, look, I've been healed, go down and get healed. <laughs> and it became impossible. And then what we tried to do was... Um, which is what you would tell me to do. We used to get other people to join, and so we would have several prayer lines going. But unfortunately, in the majority of cases, the people in the other prayer lines didn't see the miracle, and when they weren't healed, they'd come and join mine. So I ended up still having to pray for the majority. And in those stadiums, when it got dark with no lights and broken seats and so on, we, we had to dismiss the people. And I got really troubled by the fact we were sending people home uh, without getting what they were looking for. Though, of course, we'd tell them to come back the next day. And 
that troubled me and I was really talking to the Lord about it. And then the thing which really uh, caused the trouble was when the Ukrainian government um, forbade me to advertise healing and said that um, I was not allowed to pray for the sick unless I had a certificate from the British government certifying me as a faith healer. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you laugh as much as I do at that thought. <laughs> There's no official thing such as a faith healer in that sense, and certainly no governments would give you a certificate. So what I learned to do was to pray for people without necessarily laying hands on them. And I found the miracles were not diminished. And in fact, now, because I preach too many thousands, and I know that as so many of them want prayer, I, I, I can't possibly cope with the numbers. And so what I do now in the Crusades is I read this scripture to them and say, the prayer of faith will save the sick, lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. And I tell people to lay hands on themselves, which they do. I then pray the prayer of faith and God works the miracles. And we get the testimonies, which is quite incredible. But I still do believe that there is a sense where this is a difference in the church, that I think there should be a ministry in the church. I believe the church should have a ministry of healing. Um, I don't see it as necessarily my responsibility to pray just for people in the church. I do. But I find, and again, you're probably surprised if I say this, I find it easier to see unbelievers healed than believers. Oh, you're shocked. Yes, but the thing is this, if I'm preaching to unbelievers, I'm telling them something they don't know, and they accept my message by faith when I call them to repent, and they repent because I command them on the word of God. And therefore then, when I move on immediately to praying for the sick, they believe what I'm saying. They do it and they're healed. The trouble with people in the church is so often, I've actually asked the question, uh, somebody comes to me, a Christian comes to me and they say, oh, pastor, please pray for me. I say, okay, I will, but let me ask you the question. How many times have you been prayed for before? Oh, several times, you know, two, three times I've been prayed for before. And were you healed? Oh, no. You see, this is the crux. They're looking at me as some miracle worker, but they haven't seen the effectiveness of prayer at this point. And it puts me in a slightly difficult position because, yes, I will pray for them and I do believe that God will heal them, but I'm fighting against doubt. Because instead of coming to me in faith, saying the scripture says, please do it, they're coming to me with a sense of failure. How many times have you been being prayed for? Oh, two or three times. And were you healed? No. So why do you believe you're going to be healed now? They've ne when I ask that question, I've never had anybody give me an answer. When I say, what's different now? Why do you think? You'll be healed when I pray. It comes down to this. The prayer of faith will save the sick. But sometimes I'm going to say, when I'm praying with the sick, faith can come in one of two ways. You see, very often people coming to me come with faith. Their faith heals them. Sometimes I look at people and I see there is no faith. And then it has to be my faith. But it is a question of faith, of actually believing. And so I do believe that we need to recognize that the church has a responsibility 
but so do I as the evangelist. Well, I take advantage of it, and I do it, yes. And we've seen tens of thousands of miracles. In fact, if I pray for the sick in my evangelism, there's always miracles, big miracles. Uh, in Georgia, uh, it's the last time I did it, testimonies pouring in of people miraculously healed. Also, we do accept prayer requests by email or letter in the office. And I pray for them. And we get the letters back telling us about the miracles. So thank God for that. But it is a question of really believing and taking literally what God can do.